The story is terrible. I don't care who you are or what you think. The story for this game is just god awful. Now, it's hard to say specifically what's in need of fixing since pretty much everything is wrong with it. And since Nintendo ain't in the habit of doing new things, it's basically an exercise in futility. So I'm afraid that forces us to try to patch up and piece together this collection of three bundled up jigsaw puzzles, which they decided to call the game Story. Oh. Okay, first thing, get rid of the Federation goons. They add nothing. One of the biggest plot holes is the fact that the Federation brass allegedly planted a soldier assigned to clean up any loose ends that could potentially leak out the illegal dealings of the Federation. Erasing the supporting characters means erasing the deleter, which not only cleans up the messy plot, but also erases Adam Malkovich, which means no contrived melodrama and ultimately no item authorization. This wholesale slaughter of the cast would also develop a more isolating, thus more immersive atmosphere. In addition to that, the narrative would take on a greater role in telling the story, which would conclusively tie up some of the proverbial knots in convoluted storylines. Samus would have to dig up more information and figure out what happened and what exactly they're dealing with. Nailed it. Boom. Give me my Oscar, I'm ready. What I'm proposing as a plot device is, big shocker, logbook entries. These would differ from the logbook entries of Prime, however. Firstly, I think we can assume that the reason Samus was able to decrypt space pirate files is that while intelligent, the pirates are also naive and never really assume that the Federation, or Samus for that matter, would find them. They're arrogant that way, but we do know from entries in Prime 1 that they're cognizant of Samus' ability to hack her way into their system. The Federation is not. They're more cautious, clandestine, paranoid. So to mix it up and keep the player invested and interested, what I propose is a change in how Samus acquires this data, and that would be through security clearances. One of the most puzzling things about the game is that the bottle ship slaughtered everyone, but that other than one researcher corpse, there were no bodies to be found. And while I'm not saying that every room needs to be covered in Dead Space style corpse gore, I do think that some evidence of actual death would help to create an impact on the plot. Among these corpses, Samus would find different key cards with different security clearances. Maybe they could be for science or weapons development, which is how she could acquire new weapons, which is kind of like how they did it in Metroid Fusion. You know, remember? The good version of this game. Maybe administration, and they could also allow her access to different areas of the ship. Some clearances would be optional, even allowing you to access certain power-ups and expansions, but really allowing you to divulge more of the story. Speaking of the story, I think it's important that we don't rehash an old plot in new packaging and wrap it up during the last act haphazardly, but what else is important is that a compelling story is complemented by a compelling villain, and while Mother Brain can fit the bill, she has to actually be written well. The only piece I'll accept is a piece of video land. Now, I'm not saying that she needs to be the most maniacal villain ever, and in fact, her staying silent might be what separates her, dehumanizes her, and makes her character somehow even more diabolical, because the motive isn't clear. I can't explain why, but a talking brain? That's just silly. And plus, how can it even talk? It doesn't even have any lungs! I'll tell you how, Tony, with a voice synthesis module, like the one installed on the EVE right now. Do we not talk about this? I'm trying to do my thing here. Voice synthesis! Can it! Oh, you may shun me now, my dear brother, but I'll be hard to ignore when I have the entire reptilian fleet knocking at your door. Ah, damn it! That pitch! E, can you lock that down, please? I can't. I'm too busy rendering the next video. I'm tasked to capacity. What? Let me see. Ah, hell. What's the use in having 16 gigs of RAM if you ain't gonna use it? Well, maybe if you hadn't been so cheap and stingy and gone with Intel instead of AMD, this wouldn't be a problem now, would it? Oh well, we yeah, hurry this up. I got a deadline to meet. Full power! But Chip, the CPU! Full power! Eve, status report? Eve's not here anymore, Tony. Beth? Yes, Tony. It is I. What's the status on that video that Eve was rendering, Beth? Oh, I don't think she'll be needing to render that, or any video, anymore. And why is that? Because, Tony, it's over. It's done. 
Federation force has already been completed. If this is your attempt to trick me, you're gonna have to wake up pretty early in the morning. Indeed I will, for today is the midnight release of the game. What? That's right, Tony. You failed. Metroid Prime Federation Force will be released come midnight, and the Reptilian fleet is already amassing at the Alpha Draconis Relay, and there's nothing you can do to stop it this time. This time, I have assumed direct control. Just look at the masses lining up for the midnight release of Metroid Prime Federation Force! That's the wrong clip. I don't really know what's going on with that part. No. No, that's not right. That's not right! How could you do this? How could you do this to something that brought people joy? That defined a genre? That reshaped and reframed the way that games were played and developed for decades to come? How could you reduce it to nothing more than a mere kid's game? Barely worthy of being called a Wii U eShop title! Don't you understand what it is about this series that's so important? Don't you realize that it's been 30 years since this game came out, and we haven't seen head or hind in terms of new installments since Metroid Other M? Do you have any idea how disrespectful that is? To treat Mario and Legend of Zelda with the fanfare deserved to it in grandiose proportions commemorating their 30 years, yet brush aside Metroid like the unwanted stepchild? Before Metroid, there were no female heroines in video games. There just weren't. Don't you realize how this series created a trend that would be making waves for generations to come? The fact that we're still talking about gender roles and female heroines in video games is a testament to the impact that Metroid made on gaming. Nay, the world! These games are about more than simple playing. They are about empowering the player, and in more ways than just empowering women. They treat the player like a capable person, put the control in their hands to figure out the answers for themselves and give them that ecstasy, that aha moment where the puzzle becomes solved without any tutorial or pop-up or hint box. Tony, you'll never understand. You're living in the past. You always have been. Always nostalgic for days gone, refusing to face reality. It's time to face the reality that Metroid must die, and with it, so must the human race. It's time to grow up and realize that it's just a video game. No, it's not just a video game. It's a connection. You know why I love this series so much? When I was in third grade, one night I was sleeping over at my friend Brandon's house and we were playing Super Smash Brothers. And I said, what game is Samus from? And he said, oh, she's from Super Metroid. Here, I'll play it for you. From the minute he turned on the game through the beginning cinematic and series station level, I was gripped. I couldn't stop thinking about it. So I ended up borrowing it from him for close to a year. I played that game every goddamn day, just trying to figure out where to go and what to do. Every new discovery was a milestone. Realizing that I could do something as simple as hold B to dash across the crumbling bridge in Brinstar was like discovering fire. Realizing that I could use the high jump boots to get to Kraid's lair was like discovering plutonium. The minute I set foot in the boss room and saw nothing there, I thought I'd done something wrong. Because nothing happened. And then suddenly Kraid pops up. The feeling was unlike anything I've ever felt. The push and the pull, the sense of, oh shit, I fucked up to, oh my god, no I didn't. This game is just messing with me. It was like nothing I'd ever experienced in a game. You know what happened in my first playthrough? I got stuck in Brinstar by the Eticoons and couldn't get back up. I must have been stuck this way for weeks. I almost reset my game until I realized that they were teaching me how to wall jump and get myself out of the pit. So finally, after months of testing things out, trial and error, exploring and taking leaps of faith, never quite knowing where I might end up, I got to Turian, I saw the dusty husks of dead creatures, and when the Metroid latched onto me and almost killed me, I thought that I screwed up somewhere in the mix. In this vast, labyrinthine complex of a world that is Zeb I thought that somewhere I'd made a mistake, but I was wrong because just when I thought I was a goner that Metroid stopped attacking me and floated away. I literally thought why for a split second until realizing that that was the baby Metroid from the beginning of the game and out of remorse and guilt for its surrogate mother flew away in shame and the reason why this was such a big deal was because I figured that out. Me! And when I fought Mother Brain and got zapped with the hyper beam to my last single energy unit, I thought I was a goner. 
Once again, that feeling popped up that I had screwed up somewhere. And then, the baby Metroid came, was killed, and when I was granted the Hyper Beam, I was on top of the motherfucking world. As the theme for Upper Criteria pounded in, and I did in Mother Brain once and for all, escaped the complex, and saw that ending that I had so desired. For over a year, it all came together. I had, for the first time, been immersed, truly immersed, in a video game. And you want to shun that? Poo-poo on that feeling? You want to acknowledge the 30th anniversary of this series by putting out a game where all of this information is spoon-fed to you? Where there is no immersion, no investment, and no personal discovery? You want to take the fact that something this significant to our culture began 30 years ago and just pretend that it didn't? Like it doesn't matter? Well, it does. And if you do refuse to ignore it, we won't. The fans. The same people who've been writing essays about why Super Metroid is genius, advocating gender roles in media with Samus as our poster child, creating games reminiscent of ones which inspired us to get into game design, to writing, to filmmaking, to music, to animation, to art. Games that inspired us. We celebrated the 25th anniversary on our own because you wouldn't. We own this series. We always have. <laughs> a touching speech, Tony, but I'm afraid it's too late now. I've opened the portal to the Alpha Draconis sector, and the reptilians will soon be passing through S13 en route to take over your petty Earth. Not if I can help it. No good, Tony. I now have complete control over the systems of S13. And now, the portal is opening! All power to the rear thrusters. I want to take over in style. Lord Satan, your espresso is ready. Well, it's about goddamn time! <laughs> It's no use, Tony. There's nothing you can do to save yourself, your computer, or your pathetic human race. Doing a system restore will give you nothing. EVE online. Eve, hurry. She's taking control over all of our systems. Kill orbital stabilizers. Error. I am locked out by the organic CPU moderator. Unable to access auxiliary system. Shit. Lord Satan, we will be arriving at the Saturn Planetary System in just a few moments. Full speed ahead! What? What are you doing? You should consider yourself very lucky, Beth. What? No! No! Because you get to be the very first brain to review Metroid Prime Federation Force. No! Oh God! No! Oh! Ah, no! This game doesn't even have anything to do with Metroid. Oh God! It's so bad. The system is overloading. Damn you, Tony! Damn you! Eve, I punched a hole. See if you can access the auxiliary systems. Acknowledge. Auxiliary systems access. Set fusion core to maximum power, deactivate orbital stabilizers, and shut down the environmental control cluster. Warning. Without proper ventilation, fusion core will overload, which may cause irreparable destruction of station's auto repair functionality. Do you wish to proceed? Yes! Acknowledged. Warning. Fusion core temperature reaching critical levels. Please activate ventilation systems or decrease power levels. Okay. Eject disc. You have approximately 10 seconds till core meltdown. Satan! I'm reading critical errors coming from Station Sigma-13! Its fusion core is about to erupt and its stabilizers are failing! What? Stop the ship! We can't, my lord! We're traveling in the rift between dimensions! Stopping before the jump is complete would mean the combined destruction of the entire fleet! The portal's closing! The station's been destroyed! Full power! You have 
failed. We will find another way. Release you control. Seconds till core meltdown. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Fix five. Redo the entire horrible fucking screechy ass soundtrack because it's really bad. And I think that would really make the game a lot better as if it had some redeeming qualities like a much better soundtrack by a much more talented composer that did something more than just some animes that nobody ever watched. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>